Hi folks, I did a video uh, a little while ago showing you how to do the uh, F18 in DCS, how to create uh, from off to idle um, switching automatically so you don't have to press buttons and whatnot. Um, I've since worked out a slightly more refined method of doing it, so I'm going to go through um, that today. So just ignore the other video, probably end up taking it down at some point, but I will link to this new one for now. So. Let's load up our VPC software. We'll go and select our throttle and then click load. Always do that first so that loads the configuration from the device into this piece of software for us to make changes. Okay, uh, before I begin, I just want to point out that if you happen to have um, the older versions of the throttles, there are currently three on the market and a fourth one coming out soon. God love them, they, they do develop very, very quickly. Um, if you have one of the purple throttles that does not have the mini stick, that's the a non CM version, so that's version one or version two, then you might want to pay attention to this throttle double axis lock section. Uh, what this basically means is the V1 and V2 have a detect switch in the throttle handle. So when the throttles are locked together, a little line goes active that lets the firmware know that they're um, they're locked together. This was removed in the CM version and is not being brought back in the CM2 version, unfortunately. And why I'm bringing this up is because the default profile that you create in the software and then save back hasn't got this configured. This is what the way it should be configured. So this is for people who do not have a mini stick on their joystick. The configuration is button uh, action one, button mode is off, Source axis one, destination axis two, and the double axis dead zone set to zero. Now what this basically means is that if you set this up and then click save back, when the throttle uh, switches across to lock them together, it will actually directly copy axis one values into axis two. And it, mean that it means basically that the throttles will be 100% identically in sync. Now they removed this switch in the later versions and they rely on this software dead zoning which has its own problems. Uh, so if you don't have a mini stick, set this up like it is here because it'll make things a lot more awesome for you. Right, let's get on with the subject at hand. So what we want to do is we're going to create two axes to button bindings and we're going to put them at a very low percentage. I'm going to pick one to two percent. Now there are two ways you can do axes to button. Each individual axis here if you double click on it, it brings you to the detailed information about the axes. So there's axes to button bindings here. These are like little preset ones. So you can tick any of these boxes and click save and it'll set up um, a new button that will go active when the axis is between these values. But this is probably not gonna work for what we need today. So we're gonna use, just go back. We're gonna use these ones here. These are four generic ones that you can select any axis. Like I say, each axis has its own individual one with these presets set, but we need a bit more precision. So let's start off. Axis one, one percent, two percent, and I'm going to start counting backwards. So 128 is the max button. So I'm going to go 128. And the next one is axis two, one, two percent. So this is the band in between. If it goes between one and two percent, it'll trigger a button press basically, and one, two, seven. Then we click save. Now this, this is like a, what you would term a virtual button. The software just basically makes the, these two buttons go active when they're within that range. So if I go to the button tab and I move my left joystick forward, they're currently unlocked by the way. Uh, forward and backward. So that, that's a very narrow band there. See what's flicking off and on. And it's the same for the um, for the right throttle. So what we need to do now is bind this 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 uh, button to a, a, like a Windows button. This is what the logical button row is here. So if we just double click on this, I put in one, two, eight, and save, and put in one, two, seven and save and then save back to device all 
Okay, so these are the physical buttons and also virtual buttons. So this is what the verbal software internally inside the device sees. We go and load up the, the joy tester, drag her over, select our device or throttle. And now I'm going to move the left throttle forward a tiny drop and button 58 goes active. So the button 58 and button 59 is what Windows is going to receive. Okay. So that's, that's that first part done basically now. Now we've, we've set up our ranges and it's going to activate buttons whenever we move within the axes within those ranges. Now the rest we're doing DCS. Okay, so the first part of doing this uh, is done inside the VPC software, configuring the access to buttons bindings. And now we're going to configure this, some extra stuff in DCS to make this actually work all together now. So sitting in a cockpit of F-18, on a cold start, we're reading off. Go into adjust controls. First thing we need to do is, if you haven't already created one, create a modifier. I'm just going to go and add one here. And I'm going to use a button on my throttle. And I'll use button one. That's actually the little pinky button on the V1 throttle. So we need a modifier for this. And I'll show you why we need that in a wee second. Let's go down. Throttle configuration. Go. Uh, and the first thing we're going to bind is the left throttle idle. Now I've put both, I've unlocked both sides of the throttle. And they're both at zero movement. We'll double click in here and I'll move the left throttle forward a wee drop. There we go, and that's button eight. Back to zero, and then on the right throttle, click it on the idle. Get it a wee drop forward. Nine. And now um that's that's getting this from off to idle. Now if we want to configure the ability to go back and put it back into off mode. And we need to bind that, so go throttle left. So I'll move, I'm going to move, I've moved my throttle, uh, left throttle, we drop forward past where the um, joy button 58 gets triggered. Click on the off and move the throttle back a wee drop. Triggers button 58 again, and this time we add modifier button or joy button one. We do the same for the right throttle. So what this basically means is whenever I push either of the throttles forward, uh, they will go out of idle and in, uh, sorry, uh, out of off and into idle. And when I pull them back and press the modifier button, it'll put it back to off. So I'll just show you that operation now. So. Left throttle, it's all the way back to zero. I push it a tiny drop forward. Comes out of off, and it's now in idle. Now what I do is I press the modifier button and hold it down, and then pull it backward to move it back through. And there we go. Back to the end of off, and do the same with the right. Right forward, and then press and hold the modifier, and then pull it back. And there you go. So that's how you configure that. You're going to have to use a button to get it back into off mode, but the standard, um, just move it forward. And once it gets past that one to 2% marker, it'll trigger your, um, your throttle to automatically come out of, uh, off mode and put it in idle for you. And even if you pull it the whole way back, that's back at zero. Now it won't go into off automatically. Press that button. Bye. That's you. So I hope this helps.